you say one thing. I, I just found out about one of my friends. He comes here all the time. His name was Bobby. Probably some of y'all knew him. And I found out he passed away. And I've been looking for him. I went by his house about two months ago. Because I'm lazy now that I've gotten older. I don't like cutting grass. None of that. And he's been my yard man for a while. And we're going to miss him. I am. But I just thought we might want to know that. And it's just so strange that sometimes, I, you know, it just shows me sometimes we just really take for granted people, all people, but everybody's important. And, uh, you know, nothing I could have done about it, but it just hurt me to find out later. And I'm not even sure he had it, how much family he had in the city. But anyway, God is still good. I'm so thankful today that I'm here. I had a lot of people call me this week, had all kind of problems. I didn't have nothing but solutions. <laughs> I know people think you, when you really start to believe in God, they're going to think you done went crazy. I had a lady come by this week, and she wanted to sign up for that Humana stuff. She wanted to sit down and take up all my time and ask me about my medical history. She said, well, what medication are you taking? I said, well, none. And she said, well, it's going to be a short meeting. <laughs> and it was short. <laughs> I'm not, I think most people think I hate doctors and all that. I don't. I'm glad they're here. I'm happy they're here. Because you see, if you don't have enough faith, you need to have them around in case. And I'm not against them. I'm not, I'm not against medicine. I'm not against any of that. I mean, if it, if it will help you. But here's one thing I'm going to tell you. God knew that you would get sick. That's why he took a beat. All right? He knew you would get sick. It's not a point of do you get saved and can you get sick. No, he knew you would be sick. That's why he provided everything for you before you'd ever need it. I think most of the time we negate what he has provided for us and not realizing that it's already there. This is why you never get up a day without thanking God for the day he gave you. You should never get out to bed. The first thing you should do before you put the coffee percolate on, before you even brush your teeth, is tell God, thank you. What I'm thanking him for, I'm thanking him for this day that you have made. So it takes the pressure off me to have to make something happen in a day. What I have to learn to do is thank him for the day he gave me. Some of you just live, take things for granted. But I realize now we can't afford to take things for granted. If you got up this morning, God has blessed you to be able to get up. That can change in one second. All I had this week was bad news from people that have been infected, sick. Got one of my friends, he's dying. And I'm saying, boy, all this Jesus in the world that nobody's using, man, I wish somebody would just step up and say, you know what, if they don't want you, I'll take you. I wish that somehow that uh, you will uh, say, take advantage of your salvation. There's a lot more in this than what you think. We haven't begun to even scratch the surface yet. We haven't even begun to do anything yet. He didn't take all that and do all that death for you not to have life. And he didn't just want you to have a little bit of life. If you know anything about God, he don't know what a little bit is. <laughs> oh, here you go. I said, God never knows what a little bit is. How many of y'all just have a little bit of trouble? No, you, when you got trouble, you got a whole lot, right? How do you know you got a whole lot of grace? You won't know it until you get a whole lot of trouble. 
Because then God's going to show you how much grace he has for you. Some people think that God is still uh, waiting on, uh, uh, ain't quite got them yet. Could I tell you, when he saved you, you he has accepted. Everybody said, I'm accepted. Come on, say, I'm accepted. All right, I'm not finning to. <laughs> I'm already accepted. Bible said, I have been accepted in the beloved. People run around talking about I'm trying to get the favor of God. When God accepts you, you know what he says in his accepting you? You are highly favored of God. Sometimes we seek for the favor of man. God, let me have the favor of God. Let me preach to you for a second here. And I got a lot of things rolling through my head. Uh, because I, I'm really concerned about Christian people more than anybody else. Because it doesn't do me any good to tell the sinners and all those people out there that's not believing we call unbelievers. And believe it or not, a lot of people outside here is believing deeper than people inside. I had a friend who was doing crack and everything else. And, and man, he went to the doctor. The doctor told him he had cancer. He about cried. He went home and fell on his knees and said, Lord, have mercy. And you know what? He went back to the doctor and found out. You ain't going to believe it. Messed up all my theology. Man doesn't go to church. Believes in God, though. Doctor told him he had cancer. He fell on his knees in the doctor's office and said, Lord, please have mercy. He got up and left. When he went back the next time, the cancer was gone. And there are people, you know, we're gauging our lives. There's a lot of y'all I know living a whole lot better than that. Now, what would stop us from just falling on our knees and saying, Lord, have mercy on me. I believe it works for everybody. Because what most people don't understand, the mercy of God is to whoever calls on it. You can get mercy because he owes it to the whole creation because he is the God of mercy. We're not earning our healings. We're not earning any of that. You get healed because God said, I have accepted you in the beloved. You've been healed because God says you already highly favored. Don't let anybody make you feel like you're nothing. Don't ever feel down because somebody else make you feel like you're down. Don't let people intimidate you when it comes to God. No, we're not second class and we're not coming behind in anything. Let me read this text before I get off. You're talking. When you get old, you like to ramble a lot. You ever talk to old people before? I just realized that I'm getting old because I'm rambling a lot, you know. I used to talk to old people and that's all they do, get to rambling. Had a man come to my door the other day, man, just knocking, looking for my neighbor. He kept me an hour standing up. Going on and on. Anyway, First John chapter 4. I'm, I ain't going to be like an old man today. I'm going to believe that God's going to restore my youth. <laughs> I know some of y'all don't believe none of that either, do you? We quote all that stuff. He's going to restore my youth. He's going to. And then we don't believe none of it. We trying to find some jerk talk. I decided this week I'm not going to even drink energy drinks no more. Why? No, I ain't going to say that. Don't let me say that. Don't get hung by the tongue. I am cutting way back on them. I ain't had none in a couple of days. I ain't felt so good in so long, so I know this is raw energy without stimulation. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. We're going to read these verses here and then I'm going to let you go shortly. I know everybody's always in a hurry to go someplace. I'm not sure where we're going. 
Praise God. We run behind people honking a honk. I'll say, I'm an old man. I drive slow. Don't blame me because you got up late. If you get up first, you'll beat me. But if you wait on me, you're going to be behind me. Beloved, you know we talked to it, don't you? Who is the beloved? Amen. Amen. The beloved. He's talking to you. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. What do you want to know? See, a lot of people are trying to check out human spirits. They're going to tell you, man, you're melancholy, you all this and that, man. I had a pastor, man, try to tell me I'm melancholy, man. I don't know what that means. Hell no, I didn't. But that's not the spirit we're trying to try. There's only one spirit that we need to really know. And that is the spirit of God. We need to become very sensitive to that quiet spirit of God. Knowing how to operate in the spirit of God. So a lot of people got the Holy Ghost, but they don't know what it's supposed to do. They're not sure. Better keep going before I get off again. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is coming to flesh is of God. And of course, that's a lot deeper than just your lips. Because you don't believe that he came in the flesh unless you believe he came in yours. There's not one proper religious person would ever tell you that Jesus Christ didn't come in the flesh. So it's a whole lot deeper than just saying, yes, yeah, Jesus Christ. When you confess something, you agree. You can say things without agreeing with what you say. We said a lot of things that we didn't really agree with, but we said it anyway. A while ago, I told y'all to say, I'm accepted. Some of y'all said it, but you don't believe it. <laughs> right? Because once you start believing that you are, I'm going to tell you right now, it changes everything. It changes the way you look at life. It changes the way you walk every day. It changes your attitude. changes everything. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Whereof you have heard that it should come. And even now already is it in the world. In other words, people have been looking for him to come. John says he's already not just one of them, it's a bunch of them. Because Antichrist is a spirit. It's a spirit that really is against what Jesus is. And it's easy to become one because anytime we come against what he says about us, then we are operating in a bad spirit. If God says you've been accepted and you say, well, I'm not sure, then you, you're trying to operate on an Antichrist spirit. Something has to be done in our hearts today. That we're no longer doubting who we are and whose we are. Somewhere today we need to get something straightened out in our life. Either we belong to God or we don't. And if we believe we belong to God, it's time for now. Get in his hands. Trust him. And allow God to be God. God does not confer, God does not sit down and counsel and, and, and go through all your little idiosyncrasies. God will speak and you will obey. The Bible said faith coming. Go ahead and sit down. I'll get, let, go and sit down because I'm going to just go on anyway. Ain't no telling when I'm going to stop. I'll, I'll let you know when I'm through with the first part. I just this morning I was I got up and I, this verse was in my mind. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I know, I know, I know, I know. See, some people say they came to church to hear the word. Right? But you see, you're not always in church. 
It's once a week. What about Monday? You think a word could come to you on Monday? What about Tuesday? Wednesday? Do you think God will wait till Sunday to tell you something about your problems you're going to have tomorrow? You're going to get some information maybe today? But what about last Sunday when you left and then you had all them issues and you wish that you could have been at church since you got a word? The Bible said faith coming by hearing the word. That's not hearing. That's not hearing with these. That's why he's saying, hear what the Spirit is saying. Where do you think the Spirit be speaking to you at? It will be speaking to the Spirit in you. So that has to be a word of faith. When you get in a pickle, man, if I'm in a pickle, I don't want to wait till next Sunday to get out. I want God to give me a word when I need a word. I need God to give me directions every day. I want to be able to hear what the Spirit is saying unto me. Here this great love apostle, we call him that, John the Beloved. We call him that love apostle because he spoke more about love than any of the other apostles. Seemed like everything he wrote is always about love. He couldn't preach in most of our churches because he had too much love in his message. We don't, we, we don't like to bring too much love in here because when we start preaching love and the love of Jesus, it messes us up because then it kind of condemns us. Because we find out he loves everybody, but we don't. How many times that he said, God said to love everybody, you said, no, I know he didn't mean everybody. Love your neighbor. And you're asking God, who is my neighbor? Right? So here to love, this beloved apostle, he, he says, I, we need to try the spirit. Sometimes we flow easier than water. If it doesn't make waves, we don't care. Just don't. We ain't going to wrestle with it. Because I find that most of the time, the first thing to talk to us is never God. It's usually us talking to ourselves, flesh talking, trying to talk you into acting like it's spiritual. That's what I find. You have to have trained ears to hear what God is speaking to you at this very moment. I don't believe the Holy Ghost came to set dormant in your life and let you try to figure out life. I believe the Holy Ghost in our life to be released so we can know what life is. Because if Jesus said he came to give you life and that life more abundantly, you're not going to ever figure that out in the flesh because the flesh is blinded to the things of God. And so if your, if your eyesight is showing you what life is and all that life is, is life in the flesh, that's not God. So we need to be very careful. God is never in a hurry. He never rushes. He's never pushing. The Holy Ghost lead. Never push. So when I hear people say, God made me do that. No, he'll lead you. But he's not going to push you. He'll get behind you and follow you, but he won't push you. He'll stay with you, but he won't push you. He ain't, he's not worried nor scared about what's going to happen to you because you know what? He already knows you are in his hand and can't nobody, can't no man pluck you out. Not even the devil can get you out of his hand. But see, John says, you all of God, little children, you have overcome them, them who? Them that are antichrist. People that try to talk you out of believing God. People that will try to tell you, well, God, God ain't going to help you. Or God ain't going to do this. I don't have no God that's in the negative. I have a God that said, whosoever will, let him come. 
call upon me, call upon me, says come to me boldly. There ain't nothing about God that seems like he's trying to look at your weakness because what he wants to introduce you to is his strength. He'd rather for you to come weak so he can show you how strong he is. Paul said, you know what I recognize? He, I recognize that when I'm weak, then am I strong. Because I found that in my weakness, his strength has been made perfect. Boy, what a fear that is on us. Because nobody in here wants to be weak. We hate the thought that somehow we would have to depend on God for everything. I know. So he said, you know, little children, you have overcome them. How did you do that? How did you overcome everything? Was it because you were singing good? Because you preach good? Because you go to church? Because you shout good? No? None of them made you overcome? Oh, no. He said the reason why you was able to overcome is because greater. Oh, man, sometimes I wish that God. I wish this stuff would melt down in our soul. I wish every time we got ready to get down, we remember what's in us. And there's nothing outside of us that's greater than what's in us. I wish we knew that no matter how many people hate us, there's a greater thing inside of us. I wish somehow we could even go to bed at night knowing is that I'm not even worried about the booger man in the closet because what's in me is greater than anything in the world. Somehow we must stop allowing all this junk to flood our spirits and soul and realize that we have already overcome and how because greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. We need to quit giving power to stuff that have no power. Oh, help, help me, help me. You see, you know the Lord was bringing Israel out of Egypt. And uh, he was with them. Man, he was bringing them into all kinds of stuff. This is the reason why I know sometimes Somebody have changed our gospel, have changed our Bible. Somehow somebody took out all the stuff that really seemed to be against us and tried to get all the scripture that was for us. But believe it or not, they all go together. And some of the things that's for you, you're not going to know that until you find out what's against you. And a lot of us just want to get relief. Get me out of here, God. I can't take it. I can't. Let me tell you something. God said I will never put up on you more. Somebody said he won't do it. Come on, say he won't do it. I'm going through some things, but he won't do it. I know it, God will never put up on you more than you're able to bear, and I promise you, I'm not just talking because I read somebody else's testimony. I'm talking and telling you this because I have my own. I could stand here today and tell you a whole lot of things that probably blow your mind. But God will never put upon you more than you're able to bear. And with every temptation, every trial, every test, God has a way out. Every one of them. There are no such thing as my test is too big. There's no such thing as I have a trial that's too much. You need to allow God to develop what God is trying to develop in you. And he's not trying to make you some little old uh, pansy saint sitting over in the corner scared of devils and everything else. What do you think he gave you the power for? I gave you power over all the works of the devil. Will somebody please tell me why you're still testifying how bad the devil is when God said I gave you power over all of his works. And I'm still trying to figure out 
If he gave you power over it, when are you going to use it? Somebody need to wake up and answer the door. Jesus is knocking. And you're telling me all these things are coming against you and you can't, and God can't do nothing about it? Are you telling me he shed all his blood and he can't do nothing about it? I'm trying to figure out who are we serving? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I get too worked up too quick. I can't help myself today. Man, because God has been so good to me. I, 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 if I could only tell y'all, because y'all, if I told you, you wouldn't believe it. You know what I'm saying? I see, I don't, I, I'm not a Sunday man. I'm an everyday man. I, I don't, see, when I was younger, the only time I really want to get real serious on Saturday nights to get the message for Sunday. Now, I want to be serious every day because this message is coming to me every day. And I just begin to realize how involved God can be in your life if you allow him to. Whew. Praise God. So he, here he is, he's, he's with them. And, and they were a mighty nation. And, and, and he, you know, but God chose to be in us, not just with us. And we go back and get excited over the people that God was with. He brought them to all kinds of situations. That's why sometimes I, I believe we're, we're talking about, man, God led me, God led me. A lot of times, he didn't lead you where you thought you went. Sometimes we just look at the path that looks easier and believe that's the one God brought us to. Right? Because when they came, God was with them. Man, it always seemed like where God took them, there was, a, there was a problem. There was something going on. But he stayed with them. It almost seemed like God knows how to bring out of us the faith that he's looking for. And he has a way of doing that. He usually, you know, what he gave you is that. But see, what we have not understood is how we bring it out. How does God get out of us what he put in us? You, you know, some of us got, uh, uh, let me just use an illustration. Some of us trying to shop in America with Mexican pesos. Some of us are living our life on earth currency and not heaven riches. Mm-hmm. See, because what we make down here don't make no noise up there. But if we can get heaven's currency flowing in us, we're going to have the riches of both worlds. And God intended to give you the riches of heaven first. If we get the riches of heaven, we'll realize there's nothing down here that can compare to what God has put in you already. You're going to find your life become more peaceful because you're satisfied with Jesus. When you finally realize he's all that I need. All that I need. Oh, hallelujah. But God told me, he said, you know what? He said, I'm sending an angel before you. He said, and my word is in him. Don't provoke him. Don't make him mad. Obey him. You know what? He said, and then if you will, if you obey that angel, now we're talking about these natural people. He said, if you obey the angel, do what he tell you to do. He said, I'll tell you what, your enemies is going to be my enemies. Can you imagine God having enemies? Do you know how long they would last? How, how long do you think they would last, his enemy? Anybody that's the enemy against God. How long do you think they last? Do you think they stand a chance? God said, all I got to become is obedient to him. And whoever or whatever is my enemy will become his enemy. 
Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh God. Oh, they're against me over there. I don't care. Make God your friend. And when God becomes your friend, no matter what enemies against you, they're against him. That's why he told you, what they do to you, they ain't done to you. They've done it to me. Because I'm your friend. And when I become your friend, I'll take care of you. Oh, hallelujah. Matter of fact, I said, I'll call you friend because I will tell you all things. He said, a friend loveth. How many times? How many friends you found like that? Can you tell me today that you found somebody walking in shoe leather? I ain't saying they're not there. I'm not saying there's no people there. But how many people have you found in your life that can say they love at all times? Let me just break it down a little bit further. How many friends? Do you have in your life right now that you know they love you at all times? Just keep looking this way. I see y'all holding up a whole bunch of hands. Praise God. I didn't know that many people out there love like that. <laughs> I swear, but they got one that do. I got one. I call, he calls me friend. You know why he calls me friend? Because he's my friend. And he's my friend. You know what I know about my friend? Now, he's a better friend than I am. I, I have a little problem sometimes in my love life. You know what I mean? I have a little problem sometimes, but he don't. He's going to love at all times. Oh, i got to keep going. I'm sorry. So, one thing I should quickly know is that the Lord, he led them to enemies that were standing between them and their blessings. See, some people are missing what God has for them because it didn't stop by where God led them. Uh-oh. Oh, man, you know what? I lost my job. The devil made me lose my job. No, he didn't. No. No, the devil didn't make you lose your job. No. Quit, quit, quit giving him all that power. When God wants to bring something real special out of you, you're probably going to hit a wall. Because he's going to show you something that you didn't know, that you had. See, you, you don't know what you got till you need it. Right? A lot of you say, what, how, you, I'm full of the Holy Ghost. Well, what's all in there? What's all in the Holy Ghost that you're full of? Because I can't believe that you're full of the Holy Ghost and that all you can think about is what the devil doing to you with all that Holy Ghost in you. It would seem like to me if you really knew you had, you was full of the Holy Ghost, then ain't no way you'd be talking about what the devil doing. You'd be up here jumping and shouting and talking about all I done was spoke the name of Jesus. All I done is said in the name of Jesus. All I said was get back. Lose all that because when you know what you know in God, when you come to a place where you don't even understand the light, trust God still. He'll never lead you where he can't bring you out of. He, he wants to bring something up out of you that you think you don't have but you got. You think that only the preachers have power in the church. That's a lie. Everybody, anybody who have been baptized in his name, filled with his spirit, you have as much power as the bishop of Rome. And he ain't got none. Well, I got to But he said, if you do what I say. Now I'm talking about, he's talking to people he just with. Their whole thing is that their obedience was necessary. He said, you know what I'm going to do? If you do serve the Lord, I'm going to bless your bread. I'll bless your water. Means I'm going to take care of your hunger, your thirst. I will take sickness from among you. This is Bible. I, I don't know. They may, you know, they've been changing NIVs and ITs and everything else in there. 
So I don't know how it reads out in other translations, but in my translation, it says, I'm going to take sickness from among you. You will not cast your child. You will not be barren. And I will fulfill the number of thy days. I will make your enemies afraid of you. I love that. I always was a semi-bully, but not a nice semi-bully. I, I, I know I was kind of, even when I was short and small, I had a short man mentality, but I, was, I had a big bulldog in me. And I, I would love to fight. That was me. I just love to fight. Just something about fighting just done something made me feel big. Because since I was so small, everybody wanted to pick on me. But God says, if you'll just obey me, you can put your dukes down. <laughs> I'll make all your enemies be afraid of you. What? You mean I ain't got to say nothing? You ain't got to say a word. Many of us feel like we got to give the people a piece of our mind. That's why we ain't got no peace at all. If you'll just let God handle it. Today, we need to take some things, give them to God, and leave them with God. We don't need to take them from this place today. I don't care what it is. But there are things that we need to leave with God today. Don't take it back home. Don't try to straighten everything out. Leave it alone. And let God be God. Oh, hallelujah. But he said one thing. I'm almost about closed. Man, I hate to quit. Lord, I just feel good. I haven't felt this good in so long. Man, I've been operating on some of that false inspiration. Them energy drinks messing me up. I got to leave them alone. I will not drive them out from before thee in one year, but little by little I will drive them out from before thee until thou be increased and inherit the land. That's a natural thing, but what God is telling us now, you, you don't, even though everything in you is that you need is necessary, it's got that you got is necessary. See, a lot of people think in their mind, we, I ain't got no enemies. Yes, you do. Yeah, you got it. Oh, yeah, you ain't even got to worry about that. God would have never told you to love something you never going to have. <laughs> he wouldn't say love your enemy if you never going to have none, right? But he knew you was going to have some enemy. He knew that you'd be sick. He knew that you'd be in a lot of chaos. He knew a lot of this stuff that you now just now beginning to find out. But he didn't wait for you to get where you at right now and then try to come up with a plan how to figure out to get you out of it. The plan has always been there. The solution has already been there. All you got to do today is say, Lord, I'm, I'm ready to receive what you have for me right now. Oh, hallelujah. He said, we have been so great at taking all our power for granted. Christian people. We tell the world how if they come to God, how it can really change them. But when we get here, we don't want to make no more changes. We don't want more increase. Because the more increase we get from God, the more decrease you got to do in yourself. And you know why we don't want more of him? Because we like more of us. We're not living in this world to just totally satisfy us. We're living in this world to please him. You may be happy, but is God happy? Oh, hallelujah. I, I got I a final place to quit. Now, I got one more. I got to say this. Because I think a lot of people is moving in the right direction. But see what happened. Could I forewarn you before you go there? 
Well, I, what I'm going to warn you is letting you know maybe where you at. Because the Holy Ghost is the promise of God to put you smack dab in the middle of your promised land. Right? He is the promise. This is in Jesus we need to take our shoes off and let the soles of our feet just walk all in the promise. We need to start walking on stuff that is our promise. He told me I'm going to have peace. Take my shoes off. I need to find peace in the Holy Ghost so I can just walk in it and claim it and let it become a part of my possession. I need to step, take my shoes off. When I find the resting place in God, take my shoes off. Because he said, wherever the soles of your feet shall touch, it's yours. Oh, hallelujah. But for that next generation, I'm going to preach this. Now, God will let you go, man. I ain't, I ain't got nowhere to go right now. I got them smothered turkey legs in the oven. They should be done when I get through. Oh, he be cooking now. <laughs> yes, he be cooking. <laughs> One thing about Brother Wilson, he ain't going to starve to death. You can be sure of that. You know, I'm glad I learned how to cook early. See, I didn't see all these days ahead like this. And see, sometimes it's bad if you, as a man, you ain't never cooked before and then all of a sudden you lose your wife. <laughs> and now you got to eat microwave dinners. I, I don't even like them. So I can cook dressing, taters. <laughs> I, I can cook anything, anything. Y'all cook out there. I can cook it too. Oh, yeah, I can burn. I ain't, it may not taste good to you, but all I... I that's me. My plate is. Mm. Every time I cook, I want to shout. <laughs> I be sitting here eating and said, boy, mm -hmm. I feel sorry for those that ain't eating like this today. Whew. Mm. I better go. No, I'm not inviting nobody to dinner today. <laughs> Y'all didn't invite me. Y'all didn't even worry about what I was eating, hamburgers or hot dogs, did you? Well, y'all got off quiet, didn't you? It's okay. I still love you, though. I love y'all. Did y'all wonder what I was eating or not? Okay, forgive me. Forgive me, Jesus. I shouldn't even say nothing about that because... You're right. I already, you know what? See, that's what happens when you let people know too much. Oh, God help me. No, you won't. But anyway, <laughs> when he brought him into the promise, I'm, I'm, I am going to let you go shortly after this. Evening. Here's what I want to tell people today because a lot of times people, you, you, you know, in God you're growing. Did you know that? See, God take the cap pistol away, and then he gave you a BB gun. Then we had a BB gun, he gave you a little 22 caliber. And he keep working it up. In other words, the more you grow, your firepower will become a little bit greater. I know a lot of y'all love the cap pistols. You know what I hate about the cap pistol? They lose that little pop, but you got to pop with your mouth too to make it sound loud. Pop, pop, I got you, pop, pop. See, God want to give you something where you, you ain't got to pop, pop with your mouth. So he said, I, 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 I got a generation, they're going to go over into the promised land, but I'm not going to clean it out in one year. They're going to go in, but here's some things they're going to have to overcome in the promised land. See, some of you think you, you're not even saved sometimes because things you be fighting. But once you get positioned in God, you're going to meet certain things in life that you wouldn't have met if you hadn't got there. There was five kings that was left in the promised land. Five authorities, spiritual authorities in the promised land that needed to be overcome. Number one, oppression. 
If you feel like you've been oppressed, you're probably in the right place. But you need to know God said you can overcome it. Take your shoes off and let your feet touch on the land of victory over your oppression. Bible said he leaving the one king, his name meant strongholds. A lot of us have the strongholds. It's a mental thing. It's a blockade in our mind. No matter how much word we hear, it seems cannot penetrate the stronghold we have. Oh, here we go. Bro, I ain't got no stronghold. I done cast down all them vain imaginations and things. I done cast down everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. I ain't got no stronghold. But I'm going to just tell you this here. You know, just when I think I don't, then I have to realize that I may still have one in there and I have to keep working on it. I don't have time to really express all this today because we can stay on a stronghold for a long time because a lot of y'all got them and don't even know you got them. So you think this is the way I'm supposed to think. And what you haven't realized that God says, no, let this man that was in Christ Jesus be also in you. Anything that keeps Jesus from possessing your mind is a stronghold. How many of y'all have been betrayed by people? Just keep looking this way. Don't raise your hand. I probably asked the wrong how many of y'all have an unhealthy distrust of people because you have been betrayed? Just keep looking. And so, see, when I get betrayed, it's hard to trust anybody. Right? And it becomes a stronghold because the next person comes up to you trying to be nice and says, I wonder what you're trying to get from me. It's hard for a person to receive love. It messes up everything. An example, I'm going to keep going. Competition. Do you know there ain't no such thing as a better saint? Uh oh, it went quiet. I said, did you know there is no such thing as a better saint? As a saint of God, you are not better than the other saint of God. Did you know there is no competition in God? You can't compete in this. You're not going to come in first. I don't care what you do. You know why I know you ain't going to come in first? Because he's already told you I am the and you know what else? You ain't going to even come in last. Oh, I see. I feel good. You know why you can't come in last? Because he's bringing it to the rear. He started it. And he finished it. And so there's nobody in the kingdom of God can say I'm better than them. Ain't no competition. You're not going to come in first. He already came in first. Get in him, you can claim first. Oh, hallelujah. Then they got this one called squeezed. You ever feel like you're being squeezed? Huh? Man, I can't hold it. Breathe. Pressure's so great. I mean, you know, God may be trying to quench your thirst. You can't get lemonade without squeezing lemons, can you? There are times when God has people want to anoint him without squeezing. One thing about anointing God, it flows out. Some of us going to have to be squeezed real tight to get it out. Oh, God, I got to quit. 
get place off, man. Make them play. If they hear some music, they're going to think I'm quitting. Because I feel real bad right now. I can't hardly quit. But anyway, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to let you go. Whew. Man. I wonder, though, as we have heard some meddling and stuff today. Have we taken some things for granted when it, came to, when it comes to God? Have we taken some things for granted? You know, see, after a while, what happened is this. We get comfortable. Now, I know I, I, I think crazy all the time. I know I'll be thinking crazy. I'll be really, you sit down after a while, you look over your life, you look over things, and you start to thinking and regressing, and looking back. And a lot of people don't understand. They said, you know, I, I've been one of the most blessed people that I know. I'm not saying that to be competitive, braggadocious, because I believe you, was, you should say the same thing. I believe everybody in here should say the same thing. I have been one of the most blessed men on God's green earth. There's not one thing that I asked for in God that I didn't get. He gave me everything I wanted. Everything I asked him for, he gave it to me. I, I don't have no complaints. It, it, you know, I know people say, boy, I still want one more thing. I don't need nothing else. I, I, I don't need another uh, gift. Nothing. What am I going to do with it? Where can I take it to? I think there comes a time in our life when we must sit down and take up inventory, begin to realize one thing. Am I getting everything that God wants to give me? Oh, he gave me the houses, he gave me all that stuff. But he wouldn't, he, that was really just a teaser because he had more for me than that. I was glad he did it. But I finally come to terms with myself. You know, there ain't nothing in this world. And maybe because I done got older. The glamour, all that does not faze me whatsoever. Because you know what I know? All y'all going to leave it back here. And if you trusted God to give you those things, now trust God to give you the rest of it. If you tell me today I prayed and God blessed me with a home, he blessed me with a job, he blessed me with a car, good income, if he did all that, now get the other part. Now he want to bless you with peace. Who got all these great big fans at home, ain't no peace in the house? Give me a garage. I can be fine. Somebody needs to start praying, God, give me the peace. God, because it really all starts there. If you can get the peace of God, it'll sell you out where you can see the power of God begin to work all in your life. You're going to find, once you realize your favor with God, you're going to realize you also got favor with man. Come on, stand with me. Hallelujah. I think sometimes we have taken so much for granted. I, I could preach probably another hour, but I know you can't sit that long and it wouldn't be fair to you because you'd only be trying to hear me in the flesh. <laughs> but I, I'd be remiss if I did not give you the opportunity. As the psalmist David said, blessed be the Lord who daily I said daily Say daily means every day. I say daily means every day. 
The Bible says, Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth, loadeth. All I can see is a dump truck. Load it. He's not coming in with a little red wagon. He loaded us with benefits. Even the God of our salvation, he loaded us. God is not backing up a little paper sack full of blessings no more. We need to unload that truck every day. Lord, what you got on the agenda today? What are you blessing me with today? What's going to manifest today? I want to say, anyone here today that would say, Brother Wilson, I, I, I've been slack on my benefits. Man, they got Medicare. They trying to give me Humana. She was telling me all the benefits of these things and how I need. They want to give me some kind of therapy for uh, whatever. Say, uh, did you go to therapy? Look here, friend. People have been dying in my life all my life. I don't need no therapy. Oh, Mr. Wilson, you need, these are your benefits. Do you need this? I said, no. You know what I'm looking for? Humana can't give it to me. Let me ask you something today. What do you have need of? I don't care where you come down to the altar. I don't care where you stand where you are. Right now we're going to pray together. Because God wants to unload some daily benefits in our lives. He wants to unload some things in you today. Precious God, I do love you and thank you, Lord, for this great moment that you've given us. Now, Lord, I know as we stand here today, God, would you allow us to take our shoes off, begin to walk and possess the things that you said are ours. Lord, I've been struggling. I've been feeling oppressed, depressed. I, I feel like I've been just swallowed up. Troubles got me down. But Lord, I stand here today and ask you, Lord, unload so I can upload your blessings in my life. Lord, I believe that you are my healer. As part of my benefit package, by your stripes, we were healed. God, I pray that you'd manifest your love in this house, that it would just totally overwhelm us. God, I pray today that you would definitely apprehend us. Lord, arrest us, Lord, to your truth. Lord, I pray today that as we leave here, we're not leaving as losers, but we are overcomers because you have made us to be overcomers. And Lord, I pray today that every soul that heard your word will believe that what's in them is greater than what's fighting them on the outside. In all of this, dear God, I give you praise, glory, and honor. And I thank you for being so good to us. Thank you, Jesus, today for being my helper and my savior. In Jesus' name, amen.